Now let's talk about each market steer in regard to muscle, balance, and correctness of finish. We'll talk about them individually, compare them to each other, and eventually arrive at how this market steer class should be placed. The number one steer in terms of balance is a calf that is fairly clean fronted. He has good length to his front end. If we start to analyze the parts of balance that could make him better, he's a steer that could be stronger in his top line. He could be leveler and square from hooks to pins. And he's also a steer that as we evaluate him through his underline, shallows just a little from rear rib to flank. He is a calf that as we think of noteworthy IDs, we would write down in our notebook, he is a black nose smoke and a very clean sheath steer. As we watch this steer get out on the move, he is a steer that is fairly true in his movement, but comes up a little short in his stride, somewhat tight in his hip and hock, and doesn't quite fill his track as we watch him go from the side there. Not all bad in terms of structure and balance, but I think we would rate the type and kind of this steer about average. He could be deeper flanked, he could move with more reach, he could be just a little straighter in lines than what he actually is. As we evaluate the muscle and finish on this steer, he is a calf that has good muscle expression over his rib. He's a steer that we see some muscle expression back in his hip. He lacks for a little bit of dimension to his top that I think we can see as we compare him to other steers here in a moment. And as we get on him from behind, while there is good shape through his center quarter, he's a steer that I would call average to a little bit plus in terms of muscle. That should impact his yield grade in a favorable way. He's a steer that I would call at about 35 hundredths of an inch in terms of finish. He appears to have some in behind his shoulder and over his rib cage. Gets a little thinner at his last rib. As we study him compositionally back around his tail head and through his cod, he's still fairly trim in terms of fat pones. Doesn't have a great deal of fill in his cod. And as we study that steer from a profile, his flank still looks fairly empty. So about a 35 hundredths of an inch kind of steer just getting into that optimum range from 35 to 45 hundredths of an inch that we talk about. Muscle, he's average to a little better than average. In the end, a steer that I would rate okay in terms of balance, okay in terms of muscle, and just getting there in terms of finish. Our black number two steer, I would write down as an ID, as a big sheath and is solid black, and a steer that as we study him in terms of balance, I think we see one that proportions pretty well. He's got a big rib cage. He is particularly deep and bold through his fore rib. Remains pretty deep through his rear rib and flank. He's a calf that I think is good in terms of strength to top, though not perfect, and pretty level from hooks to pins. He's a steer that as we get him out on the lead, another one that moves pretty true. He's a calf that I think does a good job of reaching and filling his track. I would rate his movement, body type, and balance a little better than the number one steer that we just discussed. A uh, calf that in particular, as we study his composition, his muscle, and degree of finish, we see good expression over his rib. As we get back to the loin of that steer, there's good expression of muscle right there. He continues to get wider and thicker back through his hip, has good shape through his center quarter. He's a steer that I would call above average in terms of muscle. And as we study his finish, he's a calf that I think handles certainly with an adequate degree down his top and over his lower rib. He is certainly adequate and not excessive in his degree of fat pone around his tail head. A steer that appears to be fuller in his cod, fuller in his flank, and a calf that I would call right on optimum in terms of his degree of finish. I'd say this is a four tenths of an inch kind of steer. He's a calf that genetics permitting his likelihood of grading choice should be very high, and a steer that with a better than average degree of muscle and a good degree of balance, a steer that comes to us quite favorable in terms of a muscle, balance, and finish package. The number three steer is a calf that we will use as a good example in this particular class of a lot of things. To begin, we look at balance, this is a steer that sets the standard in this particular group. He has made it neat up through his front end. The way his top line is strong, his hip is level, and his bottom line runs very parallel to that, gives him as much look, correctness of lines, and eye appeal on a profile as any of these cattle have. He's a very bold sprung steer that's deep in his fore rib, remains very deep through his rear rib and flank. As we get him out on the lead, 
He's another steer that moves true as he comes and goes. And probably if we were going to improve him to make him better, we would make that steer flex and reach and go with a little more length of stride than what he does. You can see he doesn't quite reach and fill his track as we study the video of him on the move. And yet from a profile standing still, a calf that is as attractive in his straightness lines and body type as any of these cattle are. In terms of muscle, this steer also kind of sets the standard. Extremely muscular over his rib and loin. You can see the thickness, the dimension to his top, the muscle expression that pops up as you get back to his loin. He's a steer that's even wider in his hip and center quarter. And as we look at him in terms of finish, certainly appears to be adequate in his cover over his rib cage, handles mellow to the touch. I don't think we see quite as much of a fat pone around the tail head of this steer as what we would have seen in that number two black steer that we just discussed, but certainly a steer that is adequate in his degree of pone, looks full enough in his flank, adequate in the degree of fill down through his brisket, and one that I would say is in that 38 hundredths to 4 tenths of an inch ballpark, handles very good and correct down his top, a calf that combines balance, degree of finish, and muscularity uh, to a very high degree. The number four steer, one that is unique and interesting in this class in his own right, a very strong topped, level hip, straight line steer, a calf that is uniquely marked and could be ID'd as such in this particular group as a black and white steer. And yet, as we look at him in comparison to the first three, a steer that immediately strikes me as a lot trimmer through his underline and, and a lot more open over his rib cage, a steer that looks a little hollower back through his flank, and just initially kind of question the degree of market readiness of this particular calf. We get him out on the lead, and he is actually a big footed, pretty long strided kind of steer that I don't think merits a great deal of criticism in terms of structure, but as far as balance and type and kind, while we appreciate his straightness of lines and the fact that he's pretty sound footed, we'd like to see him just a little bigger ribbed, higher volume, and strike us as a little easier feeding, easier keeping kind. In terms of muscle, this is a steer that is fairly pinched and narrow up over his top and behind his shoulders. We don't see that same degree of muscle thickness from shoulder to hip. The hook bones in that calf are a lot more evident as we study him from behind and look down his top. And while he's wider in his hip than he is in his lower quarter, we don't see a great deal of lower quarter shape in that steer either. He's a calf that, as we said initially, looks kind of hollow through his underline, very firm to the touch as we handle him down his top, not a great deal of finish on that steer, virtually no degree of fat pone around the tail head, pretty empty in his flank, pretty empty in his cod, a calf that really is in there at around a two-tenths of an inch, maybe up to a quarter of an inch of cover is all he would have on him. You would rate that steer's probability of grading choice to be extremely low. Uh, frankly, a steer that looks like he needs more time on feed, probability of grading choice is pretty poor and not an overly muscular kind of steer for that matter either. Okay, now let's talk about the official class placing we'd arrive at on this particular class of market steers. And I would encourage students to go back and review this video and look at certain things in here that I think we have excellent examples of in terms of good and bad. From a positive standpoint, the number three steer is a great example of one that is built really stout and powerful. He's big in his forearm, bold sprung in his body type, his rib cage sets in him very correctly in terms of the depth of fore rib and his depth of flank. He's a big top steer that's got tremendous upper rib shape, is really stout in his hip. And in terms of a powerful build, being wide, thick, heavy muscle, he's an excellent example of how we'd like for market steers to be built. He's a steer that also ties with that a correct degree of finish. As we said, about a 38 hundredths to 4 tenths of an inch caliber steer who handles very uniform down his top and over his lower rib, and a calf that balances extremely well. As we look at him on a profile, the strength of top, levelness of hip, straightness of lines, and how parallel his bottom line runs to his top line give him a steer with tremendous look and eye appeal. We could criticize that steer for being a little bit short-strided, as we said in our individual critique, 
but that is a very well balanced, very powerful, thick, heavy muscled steer that combines with that a correct degree of finish. And he makes an easy and logical class winner in this particular class of steers. On the other end of the spectrum, the number four steer is one that as we think about positives, probably overall the other steer in terms of strength of top, being long and clean fronted, extremely level in his hip, and actually getting out on the move and going with some reach and flexibility, a calf that's easy to like. And yet, when we really evaluate balance, he's still a low volume, shallow flank steer. He's a very narrow, light muscled steer, and a calf that, as important as anything, we would question his degree of market readiness and really still handles too bare and looks too empty in all his external indicators. He's a steer that in terms of potential carcass merit really falls out of contention in this class. His probability of grading choice would be very poor in comparison. He is not going to yield as muscular a carcass as the other cattle would. And he's a steer that therefore pretty logically sorts to bottom in this particular group. That leaves the one and two steers and they're a good contrast in type. The two steer Overall, is a calf that is as correctly finished and as likely to grade choice as any in this particular group. He is kind of big sheathed. He lacks the degree of muscle that we find in the three steer. He's a little deeper fronted and doesn't balance up quite as well. And frankly, is not going to have quite the cutability that we'll get in the three steer. But the number two steer still represents a good body type a good composition steer in terms of one that should grade choice and still fall in the yield grade two category. Going to be an excellent carcass steer in that respect. And as we look at him specifically in comparison to one, not only is he more likely to grade choice, but he is a better bodied, bigger volume steer, this leveler hipped, gets out and goes with more correctness on his feet and legs. The one steer in comparison is a calf that does look muscular, and probably will out yield or out cut ability the number two steer. But he's a little easier to pick apart in terms of balance. His body type, his easy top, his roundness of hip are not good in comparison to the two steer. He's a calf that while he has some shape and expression, we really can't give him an advantage in muscle over the two steer. And so from a carcass standpoint, it's hard to find an advantage for one his balance, body type, and structure are not as appealing to us as that of number two. And so the one steer, while there are certainly some good pieces to him, kind of is a logical fit to fall into third place in this particular class. In the end, we have attempted to video and put together a class that is logical to place, and we submit number three to you as an example of a very good market steer, though not perfect, Number four, while he's got some good pieces, is an example of a steer that lacks for market readiness and muscle. He's a logical sort to the bottom. And the one and two steers are a closer middle pair where two is simply better bodied, better balanced, more likely to grade choice, and ends up beating one in that middle pair. We'd arrive at an official placing on this class of three, two, one, four, with cuts of six, three, and six.